Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you how to create authentic, realistic looking noise in Affinity Photo with a lot of secret sauce. So let's get started. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, the newest weekly challenges around. Check that out in my Facebook group. And also the next live stream is coming up where I'm going to do an artistic composite and we're going to look at artistic editing ideas. So join that upcoming Sunday 8 p.m. CET. So let's get started here. We're going to talk about the methods you can use in Affinity Photo to create noise because there's different ways to do that. So first of all, we have here a beautiful portrait as a pixel layer, as you can see over here. And of course, we do have an add noise filter. So you go here to filters and then noise and then add noise. And this is a destructive filter. So when you apply that to the image, this is going to be rendered into that layer, right? So that's going to be a little bit aggressive because you can't go back on that. I would not suggest to do that for the image directly. Here's the second method you can use. You can go here to live filters and there also is a add noise filter here and it basically does the same thing as the other filter but this is non-permanent. This is non-destructive because you can turn it on and off and you can always go back to the settings. So that's already pretty good. Now when you look at this picture, you might think, wow, that is very noisy. That is pretty extreme. I don't want to have that. Here's a warning for you. In Affinity Photo, on different zoom levels, the representation is not what it looks like. It's rendered in a faster way, so it doesn't waste too much of your CPU power or GPU power, but it's not how it actually looks. So when you apply this noise filter, I want to suggest to you that you go to your zoom and then set it to 100%. And there you can see that the noise is changing and it looks completely different now than before. It's a finer noise now. And this is what it actually will look on the picture. So you can set here the intensity of the noise and then you can set here Gaussian or uniform noise and monochromatic noise or not monochromatic noise. Now, what does all of that mean? Of course, the intensity is rather simple to explain. It's just how intense the noise is going to be on your image. And then we have this pop down menu uniform or Gaussian. Now, uniform creates a very even noise, but it is a little bit limited in the range of how dark or bright the values can get. With Gaussian, you have a different formula on how to create that noise and it can get a little bit more extreme in the bright and dark values. So this is suggested, for example, for black and white pictures. But of course, you can decide on your taste what you want to do. And monochromatic is easily explained. When you unhook this, you can see that my noise has a lot of different colors in here. Let's zoom in here a little bit more. You can see there's a ton of different colors in here. When I go to monochromatic, it is just brightness noise. It doesn't change the color of anything, just how bright that pixel is in that position. Now there is one important slider that I personally am missing here. And that is the size of my grain because that's pretty important. So you can imagine that this noise is going to be very fine, hardly visible, especially when you post that on social media. So here is the technique on how I create noise. So let's zoom out here. And then the first thing that I'm doing is I go down here to my rectangle tool. So it's actually two ways you can do that. Go down here to your rectangle tool, draw out a rectangle over all of your image and then go to fill up here and set this to 50 gray. So you can see here grayness is one of the choices here. Go to that, set it to 50 so you have a medium gray and then you can apply the noise to that. The second version on how you can do this is that you would go up here to layer and then to fill layer and then you select a 50% gray for that. So now we are going to create the live noise filter as before. So we go down here to live and then to add noise, which we have here. And then let's zoom in here again to 100%. 
we can decide what kind of noise we want to have here. So let's open this up again. You can see here with the intensity, I can apply that noise to my gray. I can go here with 100% and then reduce the opacity afterwards. But I want to decide what kind of noise it is and if it is monochromatic or not. Let's keep it monochromatic in Gaussian and 100% intensity. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this layer and say merge visible. And what this does is it renders everything that is visible in the canvas right now, not what I can see right now, but the whole canvas into a pixel layer. So when I turn off these other layers, you can see now that I still have this layer here and this is a pixel layer now, right? So now I can blend this with my layer below. And I would suggest you either use soft light, which gives you a rather soft look for your noise, or what you can also do is you go for linear light, which is pretty extreme at first, but it gives you a bit more choice when you start to reduce the opacity. So you can see when I turn this down here, I can get this to a rather soft looking noise that is still at the same time giving me a bit of more intensity than soft lights. You see with 25%, I get something that actually looks nice and I compared it to the actual noise filter applied to the photo and this looks pretty much the same. So you get the same effect with this. But the big difference here is because this is a pixel layer, I can now resize it and this will give me a bigger grain. This is important. So I want to compare this to a bigger zoomed noise. So let's duplicate this layer, right click and then duplicate. You can see like this and then zoom out and I will move one of them to the left side of the image and I will move the other one to the right side of the image. So you can see right now they have the same size. But now I use the one on the right side and just scale that up, make it a lot bigger. And you can see now if I zoom in that this noise is a lot bigger than the other noise. I have a bigger grain and that can be a very big benefit when I afterwards want to post that on social media because then I can actually see the grain while with this very fine grain you might not even be able to see that when you post the whole picture on social media afterwards. And here I want to show you another trick that is really cool, really interesting secret sauce. You can see here, I made some intense noise here that is bigger. And then over here, we have the finer one. Now let me move them again, both to the center. And I'm going to show you a really cool trick. So let's do it like this. Okay. So let's call this here fine and then call the under other one big like so. And now look at this. I zoom in here and let's go to this side. You can see here I have some areas that are darker and then I have some areas here that are brighter. Now here comes the magic. Let's go with the big one first and look at this. I go up here to this cogwheel. I click on that and I choose from underlying composition ranges, which means the ranges of the image below that noise layer that should now influence my noise layer. So I say, I don't want to have this rough noise, this big noise in my brighter areas of the image. So I pull this side down and then I make another point here. And let's say I pull it up until here, for example, so you can see we have noise here, but not really any noise here in the brighter parts, right? You can see when I turn this on and off, that there is just a little bit of noise. We can actually move this in here if we want to. So now there is no noise in this area. I can see if I turn this on and off, there isn't really any noise here. So now I go to the other layer, I turn that on, and then I go again to the cogwheel with this other layer selected, and I do the opposite. So I click here once to make a point here, and then I grab this side here for the darker values, pull that down, and this will remove now the fine noise from my darker areas. So you can see now when I turn this on and off, I have now fine noise in the bright areas and I have rough noise in the dark areas. It's 
pretty amazing, right? It's a pretty cool trick. Now here's another thing that you can do. If you decide, well, this noise here on that side, for example, should be a little bit more intense. I want it to have a little bit more gritty. What you can do here is you can apply a levels adjustment to that layer because it's a pixel layer, right? So let's go here to adjustments and then we go to levels and we want to drag that onto our big noise layer. So we get that short blue line like so. And then of course, open that adjustment up. And now you can see here I have gamma, which is the brightness. Basically I can move this around and then also I can move my black values around. I can move my white values around and with that I can create a pretty interesting effect that is a bit different than before and I can really adjust the noise in the way I want to have it and the kind of look that I'm going for. You can see if I have my black and white values on the starting points and then I move this over so everything gets darker, it's just looking through a tiny bit, right? Uh, but when I move this and then I move this in, you get a kind of gritty noise here. So it's pretty interesting that you have a very fine control over this. And here are two more very important pieces of advice when you work with noise in Affinity Photo. The representation of the preview on your canvas can be a bit misleading on how the image actually looks when you export it. So ever so often control your result by simply exporting it to a JPEG and then opening it up with a preview program that you have on your computer, Windows and Mac, they come with a normal preview software. So you can simply open that up and you can see how does it actually look. And what you can see here right now is that the our noise is rather fine and this is where the second trick comes in. When you have a smaller image, the noise kind of vanishes into that size. So when you want to post that to social media, adjust your noise as you want it to be and then duplicate everything. So I will select both of our noise layers, control G to put them in a group and then simply duplicate them. So I'm getting a pretty intense effect, but when you make the picture smaller, this will look good. So let's go here to file export and then call this number two for the version. And when you see now, when I open this up here, you can see in a smaller version, I can see that noise pretty well. And of course you can also intensify it even more by duplicating it again, depending on where you post it, how you post it. So you have to also experiment a little bit with different social media pages because they use different forms of compression, different amounts of compression that might eat up your nice noise effect for that image. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed that, maybe subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button and please leave a like because that really, really helps my channel. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.